afforded for quality assurance. <laughs> choices you have and I'd like to start off with the National Association of Realtors uh, mandate which is board of choice everyone who's aware knows that they have a choice of what realtor association they choose to belong to so regardless of where your office is geographically you can choose to join any realtor association you want now bear in mind if you choose to belong to one that your broker does not belong to you have to tell your broker you'd like to join so-and-so, they would also have to join, okay? But it's important to differentiate between the Realtor Association and the Realtor MLS. So your Realtor Association is the one that provides your CE, your, your government affairs, your support with membership, and all your relationships with LR and NAM. Through that, you have the privilege of calling yourself a Realtor. And because of that, all of the MLSs in the state of Louisiana, and I believe also in Mississippi, in about 40, I would say to be on the safe side, 40 to 45 states within the United States and the Commonwealth are Realtor uh, associations and MLSs. There are some MLSs that are not Realtor MLSs, but for the sake of this discussion, this is a Realtor association, and by virtue of regardless of what association you belong to, you're subscribing to a Realtor MLS. And I tell you that because on the other side, these are two distinct different organizations. The Realtor MLS allows you, you can join any Realtor MLS by the virtue of the fact that you are a Realtor. You can belong to a Realtor in Shreveport, but want to choose your MLS down here in Jitrin. You can do that because you have chosen through another NAR mandate, it's one of NAR's favorite words, mandate. So through another mandate, they allow you choice, which means you can choose. We have subscribers and participants from Oklahoma, you know, from Texas, from Mississippi, and you'd be surprised how many states that are not even close to us that want to participate in this MLS. But I tell you that because there is a distinct difference between NOMAR, which is your Realtor Association, Neighbor, which is your Realtor Association, and Jijrin, which is the Realtor MLS that you've been subscribing to for about 26 years. So 
For the past 26 years, this has been the one MLS in the area, which means we have all the historical data going back at least 20 years. And it's really important to know that all of your current information, as long as your historical information is there. But what's also very important to realize is that regardless of what organization you belong to as far as a realtor association, JISRIN does not charge anything different to anyone of anyone in addition to NOMAR people. So NOMAR people are being charged X, Bayou people are being charged X. You're a new person from neighbor, you're a new person from NOMAR, you're all being charged the same thing. There's no differentiation here. Because we have our relationship with you and because we are two distinct organizations. When you see Jijren, it's the greater, oh my God, I'm about to mess this up and I'm, like, I'm not even gonna go there. So the Gulf Coast Real Estate Information Network. So everybody's human, right? That's the MLS you have subscribed to since, I would say, 1996. Is that correct? 96 is when Jijren was formed. And that's when Jijren was formed. So that's the MLS, but you've always had the privilege of choosing your own association. So regardless of whether you're a neighbor, Bayou, Baton Rouge, or Nomar, you always had the ability to subscribe to Jitrin. So it's important to preface this entire meeting and the discussions to know that regardless of what association you belong to, you have a choice of what MLS you choose. And I say that because you are, I'm not, I don't know how many in here are brokers. I would say a larger percentage here are agents, so you are subscribers. You, through the privilege of your sponsoring broker, get you access to whatever organization you choose to belong to. So if you choose an MLS that your broker has cho not chosen, you tell your broker, well, I, appreciate where you, what you'd like to do, but I'd like to do this. So regardless of which one you choose or how many there are out there, you have a choice, but you have to advise your broker because your broker is the person that has to be the participant. Because we all know, and I'm sure Commissioner Roberts will support me on this, that only brokers are legally able to get paid. And because they're the only ones that are legally able to get paid, they're the ones that are legally responsible for the bills. <laughs> so that's who the member is, that's who the participant is. But if I leave you with anything today, this line right here, realtor organization, neighbor, Nomar, Bayou, Acadiana, any of these, this is a realtor organization. They all have a choice. This is Baton Rouge, Bayou, Jijrin, Whatever you choose to do, it's your choice. You just have to advise your broker. And that's the key here. I answer a lot of questions with regards to what the panel is going to be presenting to you today. And I'm always available, as Melissa is, to answer anything you have after the meeting. But as a base and foundation for this entire discussion, it's important to know you don't have to pay anything more you don't have to do anything different. You don't have to learn anything new or get any new passwords or logins. It's the same, okay? So you all have a choice. Does everybody kind of grasp that concept? I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to my few five minutes. And I wish I could see more of your smiling faces, but there are a lot of them behind masks. So I'm sure I'll get an opportunity to meet you at a later date. So I thank you for time and I'm gonna pass this on to the next speaker. So I'm gonna go over just a few little um, facts for you. Rome MLS represents about 11,672 <clears throat> of the 15,000 Louisiana realtors throughout uh, four member associations, which is Bayou, Greater Baton Rouge, Greater Central, Jizzer, No More, and we continue to grow. Some of the questions that we have been asked is who actually owns Rome MLS? The shareholders of Rome or the four current associations, the ones I just mentioned to you, Bayou, Jizren, um, No More, 
Baton Rouge and Central. Um, we are, we have made presentations to some of the other um, associations in the state and they are bringing it back to their board of directors to discuss what, um, what avenue they want to choose to go, if, if any at all. Another fact is that Rome is going to go live this summer, summer of 2021. All residential property types covering the 33 parishes that are currently in Rome will be active this summer. All other property types, so your commercial, your um, multi-family, blank, um, all that will be live by the first quarter of 2022. So we elected not to do the biggest first, we elected to do all of them across the board. Everyone is equal in this, and everyone has a, has a fair chance of um, going live at the same time. Someone uh, mentioned to us that we were asked to present to the, to the neighbor broker council. The truth is we were not asked to, to talk to the neighbor broker council. Another fact, neighbor did have a seat at the table with us in Rome, but they opted to withdraw. So um, just want you to know that we did reach out and they were a part at the beginning. Um, turn it over to Craig for a couple more facts. Already <laughs> messed up. Morning, guys. Do I need this? Can I just talk loudly? Yeah, the video. It's being recorded. This will bring into the mic. It's good. We're fishing. Um, Rome, the staff with Rome. <clears throat> We're going to um, utilize current staff, each association. So Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Homa, Central, <clears throat> will continue to use their existing staff. So in no more, you're not going to see any changes. You're going to have you're going to have the same staff that you might call on normally. If you have questions, you're going to have the same CoreLogic office that you can call in and get questions answered locally. Uh, you can go in in person and meet if you need to. That's all there. There'll be no layoffs. No one will lose their job with this, uh, with this Rome product, with the merger, I don't want to say merger, the combination of, of uh, associations. There's no layoffs, there's nobody losing jobs. Uh, the greater Southern trainer that they're hired to train on their product has about a year of experience, was in a different field altogether last year. Um, so just kind of keep in mind, apples to apples, when you're making considerations for where you might want to head, Make sure you know where, where everyone is and where they're coming from. Uh, price. So we don't really talk about price very much, but I think you guys, if you've said in any, any of the Greater Southern um, presentations or slides or, or website, it's clear what the price is and so is ours. It's the same as what we've always charged, $26 a month, $320 a year. I think many of you would probably know what the price is that, that Greater Southern is offering, and that's, that's uh, something you need to compare as well. Again, uh, great, uh, Jidron will be business as usual until Rome is, is off the ground. So you guys are gonna continue using Matrix and continue using your products that you currently use. And in the background, we're working on this, on this merger of data, all this data coming together. So you're not gonna go through a hiccup period where you know, we're, we're bringing in data from Baton Rouge and then you get two days of, of errors on your, on your Matrix product. Like, it's gonna be overnight, you're gonna log in and all that information is gonna be there inside of your Matrix product versus the, the competition that, that might be in this area. This is basically a startup for them. They, they haven't run a, a, an MLS. They come to Jidron for their MLS right now. You guys use Jidron. So with any new startup, there's kinks. So you guys know, I mean, speaking freely and casually, when we have a new product rollout and there's some hiccups here and there, right? Like with Matrix, nobody likes it. Everybody's like, hey, this is the busiest time of the year we've ever been in right now. And, Matrix was off for an hour, you know, like, or, or Matrix was down, or, or internet wasn't working properly. Something, whenever that happens, like, and we've been running an MLS for a long time, it's frustrating. Just consider this is going to be a new MLS in California that's being run, that's going to bring in neighbor and a Lake Charles MLS into one, where we've already kind of already had that. We've already established rules. We've already established how it's going to work between the four associations that are involved. It's a lot of leg work there, and there's going to be hiccups. And we're gonna have hiccups as well, but I promise you it won't be nearly as much. 
And then I, I think we've talked about already that the Matrix Proof product will be the same as it already is. You're going to continue to use it. Jizren is already Rizo compliant, so we already we already abide by NAR's uh, set of rules that they that they want us to abide by. Um, Greater Southern will have a new product set up in California for Lake Charles and Neighbor. Agents will have to manually set up contacts and save searches if they move to this new MLS. So right now, you know, if you have a search set up for somebody in Beauchene, it's in there, it's, it's, it's emailing out to your, to your clients. When you set up that new uh, Greater Southern platform, you're gonna have to go in there and enter Mary Jo and enter Beauchene and enter prices and do that entire search all over again. It's already here inside of your, your Jizren product. Rome uh, currently has, Rome and Jizren, well I should say, Jizren and Nomar, currently have 16 staff Many are here already. Uh, they're in service. Greater Southern will have two employees and a trainer. So we have 16 staff. Is that including our CoreLogic? No, we have CoreLogic as well. There's additional. Members. So how many CoreLogic do we have in the world? We have three. Okay, so we have 16 staff members, three trainers, versus a competition that with a brand new startup will have two employees and a trainer. So just kind of keep these things in mind when you're looking at everything. When the when the when the Facebook posts are going crazy and everybody's a little upset and. You see all things going one way, just kind of you know level out, find your baseline, and say, okay, let me let me compare apples to apples here for our, for everything for everything with this product. Just make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Ginger, if I could just kind of articulate something a little bit clearer, what's happening now is that you have four MLSs, four realtor MLSs from four realtor associations. That's a lot of data. I mean hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands, not only of listings, historical data, but fields, required fields, optional fields, RISO compliant fields, fields that are not RISO compliant. So what's happening is this, and this is why it's taking it in steps. The residential was taken first because that's a majority of what you do. It's a residential MLS. But if you can put yourself in the position of people trying to map the data, and I'm the first one to tell you that I am not a technology person. I'm just enough information to be dangerous. But I can tell you this, that we have required fields, Baton Rouge, Bayou, Central, have required fields, and they're not all the same. We can take all those RISO, which are real estate standards organization, which is an organization that the National Association of Realtors has partnered with and mandated they have certain definitions for those fields. We can take all of those fields and we can map them easily. The things that are not mapped easily are your optional fields, the fields that are custom to you, custom to Baton Rouge and to Bayou and to Central. Those are the ones that are taking the time to say we have you know, 250 of, of this in this one field, and we have 8,000 in this field. What are the percentages? How often is this field used? That's all manually done, because we know your customs. We know what you're accustomed to and what you like. And I'm not saying there aren't gonna be hiccups, but we're taking the biggest chunk of this pie first. And when there are hiccups, that's when we're gonna catch them so when the rest of those fields, those statuses come into play, then we're gonna see a nice smooth transition. But we just need you to appreciate the amount of data that you're going to have access to and the amount of work that goes into it because we're taking the one thing that's most important to us is your pain point. Your pain point of no change, your pain point of not having to learn anything new and having to deal with problems. So I just wanted to kind of expand upon that, uh, you know, how Craig outlined everything so clearly, but this is something that I think is very important for you to understand as a practitioner. It's your livelihood, it's your business, and you need to know what to expect when you log on to something and you expect to do business that same day. Thank you. Sure. She always keeps everything clear for us. Um, just a fun fact here, uh, Rome MLS providers, are, we, are, um, we contract directly from the vendors. We go to uh, CoreLogic and Paragon currently. 
Um, those are the two vendors that provide the MLS that are offered in the four associations as of today. If there is another vendor uh, or association that joins us, I know uh, Flex is in some parts of the state, we've worked with them and we would certainly, um, we've already talked with Flex, we would certainly partner with them as well. The reason we're doing this is so, if you live in Baton Rouge and you currently have Paragon, which a lot of you may have Baton Rouge access now, if you have Paragon, you don't necessarily want to become a Matrix member, um, through CoreLogic. So, you will have a choice. Once this goes live, you will have a choice. If you like Paragon better than Matrix, you can use Paragon. If you like Matrix better than uh, Paragon, vice versa. So. We do buy directly from the vendor and uh, have established, long established relationships with both. Greater Southern, they currently uh, get their software for, from CRMLS, an MLS in California, and they uh, are the, basically the middleman and not the vendor. We buy directly from them and we feel that that's a cost savings um, that we, can negotiate and get our own pricing and stuff. Rome MLS will have Home Snap Bertha Portal. Everyone, I, I think if you've listened to any of the videos or anything um, with Greater Southern, they uh, touted that they're going to have this great uh, facing Bertha Portal and it acts like it's the newest thing since sliced bread. Well, guess what? A lot of people have it. Home Snap is not exclusive to Greater Southern. We will have it through um, Rome MLS, and the leads for this do go back to the listing agent if that's what the broker so chooses. Uh, I think that has been a lot of the grief over, uh, you know, some of the other uh, companies out there that we have to pay for our own leads back. That is a choice of the broker to feed your data to them or not currently and it still will be with um, Rome MLS. Um, Rome MLS members belonging to Jesuit and Nomar will continue to have Remind. I don't know if y'all love Remind as much as I do, or if you've used it, if you haven't, you should try it, but that is a product that Nomar Jesuit has offered for a number of years. Um, we will continue to offer that Greater Southern will not have access to Remind as the rights uh, belong to Jeffrey Nomar for the state of Louisiana and Mississippi. Um, another fact, currently 100% of the data and the historical data will all be in Rome MLS. For Greater Southern, only the participating brokers data will be in Greater Southern. Rome MLS will offer access to all lock boxes for all Rome members, regardless of provider. Cooperation and compensation will also be protected. So if you live in the Homa, Thibodeau area and you use the central lock system, there will be access provided for someone that uses super lock boxes in New Orleans or Baton Rouge. Um, I don't know currently what Greater Southern is going to offer here. Um, that is. Okay. I, have a, I have a fun fact that's very really fun because it's about a month. Um, as the presenter stressed, Jesuit is not really changing. What you see today, you'll see tomorrow, and you'll see in the summer. It's just expanding, it's bringing in more listings more members that are combining MLSs around the state so that you have to participate in one to see all of that data. But the money thing that's going to be important to you, and I, I see it mostly probably in the Tangipahoa area and then in our St. James area, is a lot of you have to belong to two MLSs to have access to all the data. Many of you belong to either Neighbor and Bayou or Neighbor, I mean, I'm sorry, Jezrin and Bayou or Jezrin and Baton Rouge. Well, the benefit of this is one of your memberships can go away. So you don't have to pay two times to have access to all of that data. You will get the data so you can drop one of your MLS memberships. And that is one of the whole goals 
in this is so that you all as members, you're first, you come first. You shouldn't have to pay multiple times to get the data you need to do your business. So that is one of the biggest pain points that we're addressing here is to give you the data without you having to pay twice. So you'll be able to pick and choose if you like, like they said, if you like Paragon and you're in Tangipahoa, you can drop, drop Jisrin and stay in Paragon and get all of the data from greater, from Gulf South Real Estate Information Network all the way up to Central, to Bayou, to Baton Rouge. If you like Matrix better, you can drop Paragon, you can drop Black Knight and Baton Rouge membership through Jisrin you'll be able to get access to all of that same data. So the data is the same no matter which MLS of the four you belong to. So you only have to pay once to get it all. So that's going to be a big savings for you. Okay, one other thing, um, the e-signature platform. While um, Greater Southern is going to provide you with an e-signature platform, it's not existing at this point where it is with Jisrin and Nomar today. Um, here's some facts. It's still your MLS. There is no new login. There's no learning curve. It is locally owned and operated by people in Louisiana. Same local support, not coming from California. Your local association offers maximum benefits because of the buying power. And the vendors work directly with Rome for our members. So as we've heard a few times before, you do have choices. You have choice which front end platform you want to use, if you're going to log in for Matrix or you're going to log in for Paragon, which back end solution you want. However you want to export your data, you can export it from um, Paragon or you can export it from Matrix. It's your choice. Brokers can choose one platform for all agents and brokers and agents can suggest new technology. What um, I was last year's president of Jisrin, and John Sibley's in the back, um, he's joining us now, he's this year's president of Jisrin. What we did last year was to look at the new products that were out there, and we're continuing to do so, to bring you the cutting edge of technology to help you do your jobs better, easier, and more efficiently. We want the leads to go back to our people. We've, list, we've listened to everything that y'all have said, everything that you have put in print, and we are trying to do the best that we can to get what you want when you want it. So at this point, we've told you everything that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Latanya, who's gonna facilitate our question and answer period from you all. Latanya, can I jump in a second? Absolutely. So I just kinda wanted to do a, a, a On the, on the, we talked about, um, that's not the slide, please. <laughs> uh, what was I going to bring up here? What was I going to talk about? Oh, so, uh, yeah, so basically, I wanted to say, all right, so let's just play the what if game, right? Um, let's just say you join the greater southern side of things. And it was it was 100% data, and that's what I was talking about. Uh, Jisrin has 100% of the data currently. I just want to make sure everybody's clear and understands what that means. So, like, Every, every list that you have, New Orleans-wise, uh, North Shore-wise, wherever it might be, you're getting all the data of all the brokers that are currently in there right now. If you switched or if you, you joined over to the Greater Southern, currently they're only with their brokers that are involved are putting in there. So me, for example, I'm a New Orleans agent, I'm Maribel Realty, small company, you know, we might have one or two listings on the North Shore occasionally here and there. I'm not joining Greater Southern MLS. My listings of those two North Shore properties are going to be in Jisrin still, just like it is now, just like it is going to be a year from now. So you wouldn't see those unless you went to a realtor, a Zillow, a home snap, or something like that. You wouldn't be able to see those. Like if you join that that other board or the other MLS, you're going to have to do a double listing. You're going to have to enter in that listing twice. You're going to have to go put one, two, three Main Street in Jisrin for all the New Orleans or for all the Jisrin members, not just New Orleans, New Orleans, uh, North Shore, Luling, Death Train, for all those agents to see it. At the same time, you have to go into Greater Southern. To, to put those listings in there a second time. So in addition, you know, in addition to Jisrin, just make sure you're clear, you have to do that with the, the Greater Southern one as well. And, the, and, and I'm, just, I'm kind of the, the Facebook police guy who tries answering questions on the New Orleans uh, no, no More Facebook page or whatever, unofficial No More page. So I see a lot of questions and I see a lot of North Shore agents asking those questions and I try answering them. 
I just wanted to make sure like you're aware that there, there will be, if you join the Greater Southern, you will be paying two fees if you stay with Jishun. You'll be paying two fees, Jishun and a Greater Southern. You'll have to enter in listings as long as you're still a member of Jishun. You have to enter in your listing with Jishun. And then you'll have to do it with Greater Southern as well. And then only, we won't, like me, Mirabelle Realty, will not see what was in Greater Southern MLS. So if you decide, hey, I'm pulling out of Jishun, I'm going to Greater Southern MLS only, and you put your listing in there, I'm not going to see that as a, as a broker in New Orleans, or a broker, a broker in Jishun. I won't see that because I'm not a part of Greater Southern MLS. So just make sure you're clear with like double listings, double fees, having to make sure, you know, who's going to see that, who's going to get the exposure. We have, what, 7,000 agents in, in Jishun? that are gonna see all your listings that you continue to post just like we do today. So just wanted to make sure that was clear. All right, Thanks, Craig. So that's one of the reasons why this all came together, is that we wanted to have one access point, no double fees, no double um, payments. So no more Jezrin, sorry, Jezrin, Baton Rouge, and um, Bayou Board and Central came together to kind of answer some of the questions that the brokers were having, having to put their information in systems and, and also paying those fees. So we answered those questions along with trying to get the, the remainder of the state to join in so that we can have the entire state of Louisiana as part of a one entry point. Seems like we're going backwards a little bit, but um, we definitely want to make sure that Everything is, is streamlined for brokers and agents to do their business. Now, another fun fact is direct benefits to brokers and agents. Listings promoted from central Louisiana to the Gulf co governance structure allows for all brokers, associate brokers, and agents to have an opportunity to serve, not just those who pay to buy in. Your data, including historical data, is already in Rome. No need to join a new MLS or association. Cooperation and compensation is protected. Now that we have answered, I'm sorry, given fun facts, given fun facts to you all, we would like to open this up for questions and answers. You all do have um, a wrong question and answer sheet here, so you all can look through some of this. This may answer some of the questions you have. If your question is not on here, we're here to answer any questions for you. Don't know, I'll raise your hands at once. Okay. I haven't looked over everything, and this is my first um, conversation and fun fact um, session that I'm hearing about all of this. Isn't it fun? Forgive me. <laughs> um, help me understand, I'm an Asian member. I'm with the REMAX office here on the North Shore. What is the biggest debate? Why why aren't we able to get these other offices involved? The other offices need it more. Why aren't they coming on board with this? What's the biggest argument? Well, they are on board with it already. See, here's the here's the point of differentiation. They're already participating in this MLS. They're already participating here. The fact that you see in marketing, you see the word statewide, mm -hmm. that's a hook. If, and with all due respect, I've been in the business for over 30 years. I was an agent, a broker. So I use the quick term RDR a lot. And if I ever get a tattoo, I'm gonna get that tattooed someplace on my body. Realtors don't always read everything. And so when you see key words that get your attention, that's what you're going to hook on to. So you see statewide a lot. The focus here has been getting the data Currently, there's four contiguous MLSs that are expanding outward, okay? Exta expanding outward with, with the potential, hopefully, with another couple that are already considering coming on board, as opposed to two smaller associations that are opposite sides of the state, one having an MLS database and one not having one where only the data that's being provided is there. So the brokers are currently involved in this. The ones that are moving forward really see some kind of a financial gain and they also see that they want, they claim they want control of their data. The key here is brokers have always had control of their data. The brokers told us where the data went. 
The only place this MLS, and I'm going to speak to Jizren, has ever sent the data is where the broker told them. Realtor.com currently is the only place that gets everything. Unless your broker tells us they want it to go to Homes.com or any other website, if you syndicate through List Hub, your broker has to join List Hub. Now bear in mind when they join List Hub, which is a syndication which we feed to, but it's a broker opt-in. List Hub has over 180, maybe closer to 200 sites that they syndicate to. You have to be very careful and read every single one of those terms of service. And of course, going back to RDR, I personally have never read terms of service when I've loaded a new app. So people just say accept all. So all your data is going everywhere. But the point was we'll always blame the MLS for sending our data every place. When in fact, it's always been the brokers. Remax, Keller Williams, Howell Banker, ERA, you know, EXP, Next Home, their corporate offices, they may have individual agreements with some of these third party providers, which they might have been providing data from their feeds. This MLS has not, and I'm saying that I've been here over five years. This MLS does not feed any portal unless a broker directs us to. So the question comes down to who actually has control of the data? The broker does, because the broker is the person who has control of the office. And the fact is, who's making money? If you look at your financial aspect, if you do shopping, you're gonna see that you're paying some of the, the most cost-effective, how do I say this without saying cheap? The most cost-effective MLS fees in the state and will continue to for what you're getting. So we can't answer as to why people are actually wanting to go to the other. They're not, they're not, not joining us because they're already here. Your question is why are they moving to the other? And the only answer to that one is you'll have to ask them. The other being greater Southern. The brokers are participating there. And I will tell you, Quite a few of those offices have talked to me and said the only reason we join for $500 is because our agents are getting scared. They see the term statewide and that's all they see. And they think because it's statewide, they've got to jump on board. And what I'm saying to you is that if there's going to be a statewide and there's no guarantee because Shreveport has already joined Netrix, which is in Texas, but brokers anywhere in the entire state can join any MLS they want. So those brokers from Shreveport, there are some from Shreveport could very easily join into the room. People from the Monroe Ruston area, and they still haven't made their decision. And Acadiana as well. So if there's ever a possibility of there being a statewide, I'm telling you now, possibility here is with Rome. So like also there's just there's nothing to join. I just want to make sure you're clear with that. Like we're gonna the Rome will continue on kind of as Jijin is. So like you if you're paying for Jijin right now, you're gonna continue doing that. We're not asking for somebody to sign up today. We're not asking for new involvement. You're basically just stay stay the course of what you already do. That's all you're, that's all we're asking for. No application with no five hundred dollars to join in fee. One day uh, this summer you'll have access to central value. To make it even more clear, and just stop me if I'm not saying it correctly. Go ahead, speak up. By staying in Jizren, you will essentially be a member of four currently separate MLSs. Bayou, Baton Rouge, Jizren, Central. Central. So I don't know if that has been said that way, but I work with regular agents on a daily basis who hear top tier things and just don't, I'm not gonna go as far as RDR, but it's not broken down for them in a way that they can understand that affects their every single day transactions. This means starting this summer, when you log on to Matrix, you will now have access to the Baton Rouge MLS, the Central Louisiana MLS, the Bayou Board MLS, and what you currently see. So this summer I can release 
my bad version. Uh, okay, hold on one second, if I may. Okay, just to make it clear. Okay, so just to make it clear, and I say this, I get this all the time. We said, come the summer, residential right. be available. Now, my point is, if you only do residential, if you never have vacant land, which on this side of the lake is highly <laughs> unlikely, uh, if you don't have multifamily, if you've never touched on a commercial property, then yes, you can make a business decision to do that. But be aware, and that's why we wanna be totally transparent. Residential is being made available in its entirety, including historical data, which is sold this summer. The rest of it will be available in its completion by the beginning of next year. So your business decision is, what do you practice? You have to make that decision from your business. What's my business model? What do I focus on? What if, could it possibly happen? Will I get my neighbors you know, 200 acres tomorrow? That's what you have to consider. But when it does come to fruition and it's fully functional, yes, you can make that decision. One at, at one access, at one location, as, as Ginger said earlier, you can choose Paragon, you can choose Matrix, you can choose who you get it from. You have all those choices and you only have to pay once. But when you realize how much of the data you really need, that's when you make it. And if you're not sure, then I would strongly recommend you hold out until the beginning of the year. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple other questions. Did that answer your question? Yes. It's perfect. D, and then I see another hand right here. So I was just gonna go back to, to give everybody in the room a little bit of history. So it, it makes, because Melissa, Melissa pretty much made my point, is that when we started this adventure probably three plus years ago now, we sat in a room, and just so you realize, the state of Louisiana has 10 realtor associations in it, nine of which had MLSs. So there are nine MLSs in the state and 10 associations. So in Rome, you have four of those associations with MLSs now starting one. We're all gonna be in one big pocket. So I think that that's, when you ask the question, what are we talking about here? So that's to kind of put it in perspective. There were 10 associations in the state, four are now joining to bring you one MLS. We've had a relationship with Baton Rouge for how long have we had that come up and see? This is going on four or five years. Where you had to go into a separate section of the MLS. Is that what I'm talking about? So you had a regular MLS and you had that come up where you could, you could work somewhat in the Baton Rouge area. So when you think about it now, the big difference is you take those 10 and four of those 10 are now going to be in one. Those, those associations have now joined and merged, so there will be a seamless connection to those MLSs now. And I think that's important, like Melissa made, you know, she explained it perfectly, because it is, makes a big difference when we're talking about these things, that it is not a new system, this is the system you're currently working in, but now you have the majority of the states sitting in that pocket. When you take Baton Rouge or New Orleans alone, how many members is that? 7,000 and what is Baton Rouge? That's almost 10,000. So yeah. 10, 10,000 realtors in the state of Louisiana are already in this pocket out of the 15 in the entire state. Does that sink in? Yeah. So that tells you what road with the power and the listings and the information in the system itself as we are today. And I was just gonna to add to it, you will be able to list property in Baton Rouge and Houma, and your listings will show up. So now people join Baton Rouge or they join Houma so that they can list property there because they don't have access to the MLS. Mm -hmm. So you will have the access and you will be able to list if you wanted to, Alexandria, Houma, and Baton Rouge, as long as you ethically can represent your clients, right? You know and have your fiduciary responsibility. But that will be available through Rome. And just to reiterate, out of the 15,000 members, agents, realtors in the state of Louisiana, the four associations that are part of Rome cover over 11,000 of those agents. So that kind of speaks to just the access, you know, that you all will have 
and being able to reach throughout the state of Louisiana? I believe Rosemary answered my question earlier that I've had that no one's been able to, so thank you. Uh, but I want to just make sure I understand properly that all of the data that you were talking about, such as Zillow, that we know is a broker now, that it is the brokers, it's my understanding, that the brokers have chosen to give the data that is displayed incorrectly on the internet that agents purchase back to their competitor who's trying to run us all out of the market. Well, without going into names, they are no longer a third party portal. They are no longer a third party portal. So what you're currently seeing is a feed from an IBX of some, some sort, the same as your brokers. And those of you who work with large franchises, uh, large organizations that have a lot of good technology, you know, we have Caldwell Banker here, we have Keller Williams here, we have EXP and Next Home, and we have all of these organizations that really strive to provide technology. That other broker that we just mentioned, <laughs> we're on tape but I'm not gonna go there, they also have a high power technology R&D. So they, whatever they're doing with their IDX, as long as they're in compliance with the rules that are a part of like the 15 page IDX agreement that everybody has to sign when they get a fee, they are in compliance. Uh, they also now have access to your soul data because you have access to your soul data. So that particular one will probably get a little bit better. But to get to your point, yes, the brokers gave everybody access in the past. In the past, and if there are anything that's available now, and most of them are syndicated through List Hub, which is why I put that little you know, tick in your ear about terms of service and all those 180 to 200 websites that List Hub syndicates to, those are the ones you should be most concerned with. But yes, the broker had to approve it, they had to opt into it, and all of that paperwork comes through us electronically or either in hand as it has to be researched by us. And, and another part, just so I have clarification, because mm -hmm. we've been told DOJ demands it. That's not correct. correct? DOJ, DOJ demands what? That it's given to everyone, that they have it. Okay, well this is an excellent point. Thank you for bringing that up. And I think that takes us to the Department of Justice lawsuit. Okay, so the premise for the lawsuit, and uh, I can say this because this, uh, this particular organization does not ever wish to be a realtor organization. It's a brokerage by the name of Rex. Rex has been putting, feeding information to and trying to uh, trick a lot of people or taping people in what they say. And they're telling the Department of Justice that unless everybody has access to this information, it's not fair. So that's the premise for the Department of Justice lawsuit. The reason you belong to the National Association of Realtors and you participate and subscribe to Realtor MLSs is because the National Association of Realtors is negotiating and settling and securing an agreement with the Department of Justice to keep you from having to provide everything. However, because you're realtors, you're bound by the Code of Ethics, and Article 3 says you should cooperate. That's what St. Patrick's Day says. says cooperate if there's no agreement in place with just about anyone, okay? You take that to the rule and you move it forward to the lockbox situation. The lockbox rule takes us back to that point where you allow anybody access, even if they're not a realtor. The rule states, and here's a key word that you should look for when the National Association puts out the final rule, with seller's approval, okay? You should, it doesn't say you must, it doesn't say it mandates, <clears throat> forget that word, you're not using it here. They're saying you must with seller's approval. Now if the seller says no, okay, you don't have to. Providing information to everyone is is what the internet has, has prophesized for a long time. And if for anybody that's been in the business a long time and has ever been involved with the National Association of Realtors, if you've ever heard the term lions over the hill, that's what, that was back, what, 25 years ago? When Microsoft was coming over the hill, and look what happened to Microsoft. So that's what's happening now. 
So there are certain things in place that you must make information available, but it doesn't have to be all the MLS information. Brokers have control of it, sellers have control of it. You look at your listing agreement, it says in your listing agreement, the seller must give permission for where things are posted and how they're posted, okay? You also look at the Department of Justice rule when it comes to lockboxes. And this is something you should take back to your brokers, which is totally off point here, but I'm gonna take advantage. I see a shake in the head. The liability will be with you and your broker when you educate your seller to say, so-and-so from XYZ down the street, who's not a member of my organization, I don't know who they are, I know they're licensed through LREC, God bless, sorry, but they're licensed to sell real estate in the entire state of Louisiana. However, they're not a member, I don't know them, they would like to show it. You give them that opportunity and you tell the seller, I would strongly recommend you and your broker consider some type of a uh, hold harmless or liability issue and have educational classes in your office when the Department of Justice comes through. Because yes, the lock boxes will easily be accessed whether you use Sentry Lock or Supra. It's not gonna be difficult. It's how you allow the property to be shown. So getting back to that point, yes, the internet says everybody is supposed to have to have access. That stems from Rex and the Department of Justice agreement. However, when you read the National Association of Realtors rules and negotiation with DOJ, it's a little bit more fine-tuned and there are options. You must, according to the Code of Ethics, cooperate with everybody. However, you must also do your fiduciary uh, obligations to your sellers and make sure people are safe. Make sure they're educated on who they're letting in their, in their home and make sure everything is Everyone is well aware of what's happening and when it's happening. Does that make sense? So yes, the brokers must do it. No, you don't have to give it to the world. However, your code says you should cooperate. Article three. I'm gonna hand this back. I don't know if that's for me or not, so. Oh. Well, I think we've been told that we're behind in Louisiana. I don't know why the sales are still happening if we're so behind. But what I want to ask is, okay, say the greater so we won't be able to use their lock boxes because they're gonna be different? Right. No, it, regardless of what lock box they get, and there's really only two on the market. There are two electronic products on the market that provide you security and ensure your seller the opportunity to know who gets in, when they get in, and they show it, okay? Both of those products will work with each other, and when I say work with each other, I'm gonna say this. Supra will have the ability for someone to call you and say, hi, I'm Jane from XYZ down the street. I'm not a realtor, I wanna show you property. You make that decision, you talk to your seller. If you're using Supra, you will have the ability then to send them a one-time code for a limited period of time in an email with a link that will allow them an app to open that box. Okay, and it'll be your responsibility and your broker's responsibility who you let in. The same thing with Sentry Lock. Sentry Lock has a keypad on the front. They will give you a one-time code and they will allow you in for a specific amount of time. So regardless of which you use, if you're not currently participating in that particular box, it will not prevent you from showing it. That's the point of Rome. Rome, you can go anywhere as long as Ginger said you're ethically capable of taking care of your client's needs and you know the area, the data will be there and the lockbox will be there for you to use. Very good. Thank you. Sabrina. Um, so I don't know how to ask this question without seeming inflammatory in some way, but I guess I just will because that's just me. Um, so, Rome is very intuitive, it makes so much sense, it's very forward thinking, it's like autopilot, it's synergistic, it makes so much sense. Like that's the obvious answer to me. I wanna know, because I'm personally in a position where I work for the elephant in the room, Ladder and Bloom, and they were one of the initiators of Greater Southern, 
where did the divergence come in for some, and I think that's what her question was going to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, it's, it's counterproductive to recreate the wheel. So why was that decision made, if you can answer that honestly? Do we have that answer? Well, maybe, maybe. So what I will say, I was on the consolidation committee when everybody was in the room. All the brokers across the state, Louisiana Realtors hosted an event. There were numerous meetings. Missy and I went to most of them. We were the only representatives from. How long ago were we talking? No more. Uh, four years. Four years. It's been a lot. Four years. Mm -hmm. And we had an outside um, vendor consultant come in and try to bring the room together for everybody to accomplish what everybody wanted. Right? There were pain points that the brokers had. One of the pain points that Gardner had and Latter Bloom had at the time were they had agents in several parishes in several different parts of the state and they would have to input their listings in Paragon and Plex in Matrix. And they wanted a single point of entry. Mm -hmm. That was a pain point. They had agents in New Orleans that could get fined for something and agents in Lafayette would not get fined for it. So there were rules and regulations statewide that were not cohesive. They wanted that. Um, they wanted everybody's you know, data all in one uh, data box. Those were some of their main pain points. Um, we started looking at how can we accomplish this? How can we bring everybody together? And you have to understand that it was a room of the CEOs of the associations and the MLSs, and it was brokers and owners that were all trying to make this decision with a consultant directing it, okay? It's very hard for people to just roll over and say, okay, I'm ready for change tomorrow. So we uh, led the meeting where several of the associations said, this sounds like something we could do. And several said, we, we don't want to play with anybody. We don't have a reason to play with anybody. Nobody is near our area. Our brokers don't want anybody to come in and sell houses there. They don't want them to have access there. That's what we want to be. So, the brokers, I feel like some of them maybe felt frustrated and said, we'll do it on our own. So they branch out. There was another group that uh, came together and it was several of us in the room. Um, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, neighbor sat at the table. Uh, and we all started discussing as brokers, broker owners, managers, and as agents, we had agents in the room as well, we started discussing how can we make this happen for the brokers? This is what we want. How do we make this happen so we can all come together? And we had to decide. Everybody thinks Nomar and Jezrin is the big bad wolf. Everybody thinks we want to gobble them up and eat them whole and throw them away. So none of the small associations wanted to partner with us. Like, I mean, it's just a fact. Like HOMA and uh, Central. Central, Alexandria, Natchitoches, just who Central is. They're like, why would we partner with, with No Margesrin in the year they eat us up? So we all had to take out our egos, take off the, the bad feelings about everybody, and we worked, we worked for over two years in the room of how can we make this happen? And what we did is we gave up things. We may have the 7,000 members, but Jez uh, Central and Bayou have the same voting power at the table that we do. And we said to have the agents be afforded all of the data, we have to do this. This is what we have to do for our state. And so we did. We started, we worked, we worked, 
And we started with a committee of what, like 20 brokers? Um, all of us were on that committee. John in the back, D was on that committee. We drove back and forth to Baton Rouge because that was the convenient point. Constantly, back and forth during um, COVID, we were on Zoom meetings. And until we were able to make an operating agreement and say, okay, we're gonna do this. Well, at the same time, a, the group of brokers um, they continued meeting and they came and met with us and said, y'all go in with us. And we said, as long as the associations are in charge, we don't want a single broker running this. We want the associations back in this. And that's where we parted water. They couldn't do it. They said they wanted more control and they kept going down their alley. We kept going down ours. Now here we are. And um, we're gonna have two different entities, I guess, as long as they wanna stick it out, but we've got more members. So who is currently part of Greater Southern? Um, they have a website. I, I, can't tell you, I can't tell you all of them, but you've got the associations that are uh, part of them, or Lake Charles, and Lake Charles has 600 and something members. Oh, okay. Yeah. And neighbor has uh, neighbor joined. It's only live in Lake Charles. And the neighbor is part of Greater Southern. Yeah. Neighbor chose to leave the table with us and become part of Greater Southern. So I'm a neighbor member at this. If time. you're a neighbor member, okay. you can continue to be a neighbor member and belong to the association that you've always belonged to, and you can still choose to use Rome right. MLS and stay with Jesrin and not move to Greater Southern. As long as you're a broker. As long as you're a uh, your broker, though, correct? No, Doug Bernard is our broker. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So yes, your broker would have to be yes, stay a member. Choice. Stay a member, that's a choice. Okay. That's a choice. So that's why in the beginning, Rosemary was trying to make the distinction between the board or the military association and the MLS, two separate entities. Neighbor is an association, Nomar is an association, Greater Southern is an MLS, and Gulf South Real Estate Information Network, or JISRIN, is an MLS. So, I was, I was in some of those meetings uh, whenever we started this whole process, and I guess it was asked, how, who are the brokers that are in Greater Southern? At the time, I believe there were 13 brokers that were coming to say, we want to start an MLS, and we want basically you guys to let us take control of the MLS. 13 brokers out of, I think, roughly 800 that are part of JISRA. About over 1,000. So, over 1,000 that are part of JISRA. So, as on the board of JISRIN and a representative of those thousand brokers, I couldn't just say, okay, sure, y'all just take them all out and do what you want with it. When it's 13 out of a thousand that are asking for that. So what we did at that point in time, as this agenda kind of described was, we said, okay, well, we can't agree to give you ownership of the MLS, but we can do everything you're asking for. We can bring this to statewide MLS. We can consolidate rules. We can do everything that you're asking for, and that's where we come to now. Is we tried to accomplish everything that they wanted, but we couldn't just give away the ownership of MLS. I mean, we would be doing any of our member service. And there's a lot, been a lot of questions from those brokers asking, well, don't the brokers control and everything here, the realtor association for the brokers? Absolutely. And that's where the brokers vote on who sits on the board of JISRIN, who all of that. So if the brokers wanted to affect change, they had the channel to do so. But you had a small number of brokers that wanted to basically buck the system, for lack of a better term. Um, and there's a lot of history there, and probably emotions and things in the past that happened. But when it comes down to mechanics of how this all comes together and works, that's at that point in time kind of the perspective that I have on things. Um, going forward, I mean, you might say, okay, well, why are we here even talking about this? Um, it, and in a way, if you look at it, if you just want to have all the benefits of this, you don't have to do anything. You just keep paying your dues, keep belonging to judgment, and it's all going to come to you. We're making that happen. Um, the thing that we, the reason we had this meeting and we wanted to get out here to, to provide information is that there's a lot of information coming from Greater Southern. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the facts were presented and that 
as long as everybody continues to, to stay the course, we're going to deliver something great. If people start pulling out, though, of Jisrin and Rome and taking and forming this other MLS over here, then we're that that's going to create some disruption. And it's going to the more that does that, people are going to have to decide. Okay, well, I'm not going to have access to the full data unless I belong to both. So you're going to have to decide: Do I belong to this one? Do I belong to that one? Or do I just belong to both? But as, if everybody just stays the course, it's going to be the most efficient and effective. If we divide our data and people start pulling out and separating into two different MLSs in this same area, the only place that's going to have all of the data is the portals. So you're going to end up having to go to the portals to find all the data. Thanks, John. And just remember, the MLS Association, this judgment has been in existence for 26 plus years. So we know how to work kinks out to make things work for all brokers, not just brokers that are involved, you know, a particular set in leadership. We want to work smarter, not harder. Absolutely. I don't want to work harder, guys. <laughs> professional standards so if there is a complaint against from one participant to another then we have to as the operator of the MLS the association has to provide the professional standards no matter what association you belong to but because you belong to Jisrin which by the way Jisrin was formed in 96 to be greater than just no more they did that they broke off they separated formed a separate corporation so people from any area would feel comfortable joining children to get access to all the data in the 10 parish area and not feel like they're having to buy their services from no more. So that's just history of where Jisrin came from. The brokers at the time said, we need a separate entity that can be separate and apart from the association and grow for the purpose of technology and providing the agents what they need. But being it was association owned, is what tied it back to professional standards. You have to operate under the code of ethics and the association has to provide the venue for filing complaints, holding hearings, and determining it if there is a violation of the code and then what the, the um, sanctions would be. So that's the main part the associations play and the other is that it makes it an all realtor and an MLS. So to participate in Jisrin, you can be a member of no more or any other realtor association. You just have to be a realtor because it's a realtor owned MLS. So that's that's the main goal. If I could add to that, Rome, when Rome is fully functional, it will be its own entity. So that entity, Rome, will have a board of managers. The four people you see here represent Nomar Jisran on the board of managers. So what's going to happen is this: Rome will then take care of the database. They'll negotiate the contracts. You will not only have just the 7,000 now, but the economy of that scale will be 11, five, almost 12,000 people. So you are going to have two things. You're gonna have the MLS provider here with a board of managers represented by each of the shareholders. Currently four, potentially more, okay? Then each one of those shareholders have representatives on the board 
of managers. They will run the database, they'll make sure the data's clean, they'll make sure the compliance is in place. All that data is coming through one point. Now you've got your shareholders. You then have a choice. You've got these association MLSs are now participating in one MLS. And then you choose where you like to get your services from. You can get it from Bayou, you can get it from Baton Rouge, you can get it from Central, you can get it from Dijon. You do the shopping. Who's providing you with the best service? So now it's just not an association owning it. They own it, but they own this, and they're not just one association. It's the shareholders <clears throat> currently, and hopefully in, a, in the future, that will build this one database to make it potentially the statewide MLS. And so you've got representatives from all over the state sitting on this board. You can go to your local board of directors and tell them of your concerns and they will take it to their own board of managers. You'll still be able to call your local staff, but when it's fully functional, it's no longer one association that owns the MLS. It's an MLS being fed the data and being owned by multiple associations that provide you your cooperation and compensation and ensure that you have the dispute resolution with regard to the code of ethics, regardless of where you're getting your service. Does that make it a little bit better? Instead of the 
With no interest. But you'll you'll flip a switch and have four brokers, four associations, and you three twenty and still get your pay every year. But what we can't tell you and we can't discuss is the other entity. We don't know. They're throwing out numbers of what their dues are going to be, but we don't know exactly what product that's going to cover. Right. And we don't and we don't know if they're going to end up going up higher than what they are to offer you other products. Okay. We don't have that information. Right. How many brokers do you anticipate are going to be with Greater Southern and leave Jesuit? We do not have that information. You know, it's, it's a broker choice. Um, I mean, I've talked to a number of them and nobody has told me, not a single one has told me that they are pulling out of the business. That's the ones I've talked to, so. Have you talked to Lavender Blue? Mm -hmm. I have not Okay, are you going to tell us if a big entity like Ladder and Bloom chooses to pull their information from Jesuit and go to Greater Southern? We need to know who are we, the, whose information are we getting? So okay. let me just say this, right now, there, I feel like you're gonna have, for a little while maybe, I don't know, two entities or something, Currently, we have over 12,000 active and pending listings. The, the broker that you're talking about, they have like less than 2,000, I think. So how are all of their agents going to just show and have access to those properties? I don't see them, as another realtor that's in the market selling, I don't see how you can do that. I would think you have to do both. And we're not going there. So they would hurt their realtors more than help. They would. They, they would be Those fleeing, wouldn't would they? Be if you didn't have access to all, you want all of the, you want all the properties available out there. So I, I don't see how until they have all of them that have said, okay, we're cutting them, going, and we haven't seen an indication of that. Do you think you're going to have more of a situation where you're going to have, you're going to be putting it in two systems to make sure that you do have access to all of them because that small pocket. Even if, let's just pick a number out of the air. We have 7,000 where we are now. Let's just say 2,000 members pull out. You still have 5,000 in one system and two in the other. You're going to need to cross over. So the, the brokers who do choose to, to head in that direction are still gonna need to stay with the majority in order to have the exposure for the realtors to be able to represent their clients and customers to the best of their ability. Yeah, and remember, um, you know, while we have large brokers in our MLS system, we do have over 7,000 members. So out of that, the largest broker may cover maybe about 10% of that number. So we still have a lot of other brokers within the association that will still be able to keep the data, you know, that all this data is being pulled from. So if they do decide that, whatever given point, which we hope that it doesn't come to all of that, but you know, we just gotta look at the way things are going and if they do decide, we still have a large membership throughout the state as well.
belong to the broker. broker. So right. the broker has to put all their listings in whatever MLS they participate. So let me say another scenario that could happen. Say the broker puts their listings in to Greater Southern, but five of their agents choose not to belong to Greater Southern, they choose to stay with Rome. Those listings are the brokers, so they will be there, but the brokers will get all of the leads and everything that come off of them. The agent won't because they don't belong. <clears throat> so, like if a broker moves, he's going to get the stuff. You know, so it's going to force, if, if everybody moved, it would force you to two things. So to sort of follow up with that, obviously there is some concern about whether we're getting into listings on one side or the other. Um, besides like ethics and doing fiduciary to your clients as agents, is there anything that states that we have to be part of both because we're doing better service to our clients? No, it's a business decision. It's a financial decision. It's a, as Missy said, it's a business decision, a financial decision. What you have to ask yourself is this. We all know, as was said earlier, all your data is already global. Your focus is on what's local. So if you represent buyers, where are you getting the largest amount of inventory for your buyers? If you represent sellers, where are you getting the most exposure locally for your seller? That's the business decision. And I know the focus has been with brokers here, but you know, the brokers are the ones that are responsible for the office, but you're all the ones that are making the money. You're all the ones that are making the decisions. You have a choice. So that's what's important. And you did say the, the responsibility to your, your client. So you do have a, a responsibility to disclose to them accurately. So if you're, you can't say, oh, I'm making your listing available to 7,000 members, if you're not participating in Jitter. So it's your business decision, but you have to inform your client as to what exposure they will get with their, their listing. I just wanted to be clear with that. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes. Well, I want to take this time and thank you all for coming out and participating in this. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.